And this is about the trans law reform. This broke earlier in the week, but essentially a cabinet split has emerged on trans policy. It emerged Kemi Badenoch does not believe a law change is required to ban children changing gender in schools. This is complicated, and I had to it read is. this about 12 times. So... If you go back to July, the Attorney General, Victoria Prentice, said the government would have to change the law because otherwise, oh, this is about social transitioning, mm. because otherwise it would breach the Equality Act. Now, in ter what I understand by this, social transitioning, is how young people choose to show themselves in public so whether they dress as a boy or a girl which is is that fair well it's part of it but it will also be about changing their name from susan to a Stephen. a pronoun it will be about using um, girls or boys toilets and it will also be about participating in sport yes so when i was doing drive in the week i interviewed sam dowler about this and and I was very confused by the response that Sam gave. Let's just watch that clip and, and see what he says. People at home who have literally no idea what you're talking about, just explain that. So can you explain social transitioning? This is where, because we're talking about children here, mm. we're not just mm. talking about the trans community, we're talking mm. about all children. So yeah. in terms of socially transitioning, my understanding, this is about uh, how children maybe want to dress, how yeah. they want to be referred to. Yeah, absolutely. It, so this is, I'm going to use a friend of mine as an example, a friend of mine from school, her, her daughter has come out as non-binary and uh, chooses to use um, a male name at school and then uses her female, female name at home. She dresses um, in a way, sometimes she might look like a boy, sometimes she might look like a girl, but then the whole idea of this is that, you know, what is looking like a boy, what is looking like a girl? Do you know what I mean? Like, just why, why, why should, gender is, a is gender is a construct, 15. Right. Gender is a construct that we we have created. No, and it's own, not. And you have a biological sex. That's, that's okay. sex, not sex gender. gender. But let's okay. take, gender let's take our David. outfits, yeah. for example, mine yeah. and David's here. Yeah. If we're talking about a school uniform, say, mm -hmm. I'm wearing trousers. Yeah. Many schools, that would be a male item of clothing. Yeah. You're wearing a pink shirt. And you wouldn't be allowed so in many some places, schools. It's not that would, pink. It is it's quite <laughs> it's pink. pink. But <laughs> people would say, oh, you know, pink's for girls. Mm. And maybe, like, 20 years ago, that would have been so incredibly mm. strict. But there are still schools today who say, no, girls have to have to mm. wear skirts. What on earth has wearing a skirt got to do with your gender? So, so if I'm confused, I know people around this country will be confused. The point I was trying to make is there are two biological sexes. I mm -hmm. think you and I agree mm -hmm. on that, male and female. And it is not possible to ever change that, whatever you do. And I agree with you. Now, what Nicola was saying is that actually gender is a social construct and there are multiple genders. And this is where I got really, really confused. And if I'm confused, children will be confused, parents will be confused, the schools are confused. They're desperate for guidance from the government. Right, you're meant to be confused. And I'm going to say that you're meant to be confused. So Nicola is actually completely arguing against everything that I'm sure she believes in in terms of feminism. So for the last few decades, feminists have fought to get rid of gender stereotypes yes we don't want gender stereotypes because there are men and women it's as simple as that and they live how they want and what you wear and how you dress and how you behave has no bearing on that so that's a fight that was won but now suddenly over the last five years the trans um, activists have brought in this new feeling that if you wear a dress and put makeup on and wear lipstick then you are a woman and that's how men who want to identify as women are now presenting themselves and that apparently is enough to call yourself a woman and go into a woman's toilet if you're a woman who crops her hair off maybe takes her um has a mastectomy and takes her boobs off, it's as simple as that, wears trousers and a shirt, she's a man. So it's the trans activists who are introducing, reintroducing gender, so they have constructed it deliberately, and it is confusing children. Mm. David, what really upset me about this whole interview is Sam is talking telling you that from a position of science it's really clear you know it's not clear so the hillary cass report the government appointed this doctor was, this was into the tavistock yeah her interim report states clearly that social transitioning is not a benign act it may cause harm and i tell you why it causes harm children are going through puberty when they are at their most uncomfortable with their bodies and confused about their sexuality and their you know how they want to present to the world and if you grab them at that point and say well actually you're just in the wrong body you put them on a path and once you start letting them call themselves by a different name 
act as a different sex they are on a path and the next step is puberty blockers and the next step from that is cross sex hormones and we now know that if and these are the good studies the decent studies are 11 of them say that if you leave these children alone support them support their mental health issues which they mainly all have let them go through puberty. Puberty is the deciding factor that actually makes them come out to where they should be. And up to 93% of those kids, mm. if allowed to go through puberty, will actually settle comfortably with their biological sex. Mm. Many of them, David, will be gay. You talk about the CAS report. The NHS says on the back of that uh, that kids who believe they are transgender are going through a phase, as you rightly say. Uh, when they looked at the Tavistock, if you look back in 2009, 70 kids were referred. By the time we got to 2022, we were on 2,500 kids. Now, you're not telling me that there is that massive increment, and this is what Hillary Cass was looking into. And as you rightly say, 97% uh, of kids actually had underlying issues here. Course. They had autism, they had depression. ADHD. They had ADHD, Anorexia. for example. But you're also right. There's nothing wrong with boys wearing girls' clothes and girls wearing boys' clothes. But that is very different to putting them on the path to changing their biological function. Yes. My sister's firstborn child, and she has four, um, was a girl who only ever wore football kits, only ever looked and acted like a boy, went to her prom dressed in a football kit. My sister just left her alone. And you know what? She's now a very happy 21-year-old woman. Mm -hmm.